trying to bring it back. This is a story about transformation. Trashed paint, trying to transform it into something beautiful. Now, my dream, and I've got compounds, and I've got polishes, and I've got sandpaper. My dream can turn into a nightmare pretty quick. When you're getting this aggressive, when you're playing with fire. So this is a hopeful transformation, but it's by no means a guarantee. I guess you're gonna have to watch, and I hope you do. I hope you learn something, I hope you enjoy. And just maybe, just maybe we can take this trash paint and give it that showroom shine. On the top of this panel, I want control. I want my red sticks from KXK Dynamics, my fresh sandpaper, 2000 grit here. It's about as aggressive as you'd ever want to go on OEM paint. And instead of using a big dual action sander, I'm going to hand sand here with 2000 grit. It's more likely to gouge the paint doing it this way by hand, but the scratches, these random, isolated, deep scratches, they're deep. So I have proper lubrication. I'm always going to use clean sandpaper. Let's get Some people swear that you need to have the sandpaper soaking in a bucket, but I've seen Jason Kilmer say you don't need to, so I just like to, I spray it off a lot, um, almost like it's my little pressure washer, and I flip sides often, and I always use clean sandpaper. I'm never recycling an old piece of sandpaper. Never be cheap with sandpaper is what Jason Kilmer says. So this is some pretty ugly sanding action. I think I'm a little nervous on camera or something, but uh, you can see what we have left here, what we're trying to get rid of. And that's what I'm going after, is mostly these lines. I don't need to be super worried about some of this other stuff, but some of the deeper scratches, like right here, I should be sanding. And then refinement just goes out the window. I remember why I hate hand sanding now. So I'm taking 3000 grit sandpaper on a dual action polisher to get out nasty gouging. See what this looks like after I have dual action sanded. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect. I tried to avoid these edges here. Um, do you see how even of a pattern that is? I mean, I just gouged it so hard. You can see some of the sanding marks there. I just didn't get onto the edge. I'll probably either take a, a less aggressive hand sand here or I will actually compound and just try to use a rotary or compound that out. But look at how even the sanding mark is now. Before it was a little bit all over the place and at least now I've evened it out. Now these edges are gonna be a little tricky. I'm gonna get to that in a second. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and wet sand this entire panel. Yes, this is kind of a goofy looking polisher. It's actually a chemical guy's torque polisher. It has an eight millimeter throw. When you're talking about a, a Rupes 15 millimeter throw, you're just talking about a more aggressive pattern, a more aggressive throw. So you're more likely to gouge the paint. So the lower your millimeter orbit, the less aggressive your dual action sanding will be. And this was sloppy, I knew it. And I knew I'd have to be very careful in the next stage to get out the pigtails along the edges of this panel. But now instead of trying to compound out pigtails on the edge, I'm taking that 3000 grit disc. This was from the six inch that I put on the foam interface that I put on that chemical guy's torque polisher. This is the one I just used. And you know, they stop cutting on a machine after about a panel. You can start to tell it becomes a much more translucent cutting pattern. So they're sort of done at that point. And at five bucks a pop, I really wanted to get more use out of them. But it's definitely aggressive enough to cut out these pigtails and at least I'll have straight sanding lines now along the edges to contend with as I go to refine the paint as opposed to these rabbit hole pigtails that are sort of the bane of our existence as a detailer. 
So here I am looking through my DA sanding marks on this big panel. I'm checking where I might have missed a few scratches a little deeper and depending on the scratch I'll do some 3K spot sanding again with that Meguiar 6 inch disc that originally was on my dual action sander on this panel. Now you really don't want to go in the opposite direction here so you usually want to start aggressive and then refine. If I go back to aggressive after doing this refining step I'm just in the danger zone with going through the clear and so I'm going to be careful here. There were just a couple scratches. And after that, I'm going to go manly, man. I want to go for this big rotary, right? This is how I'm going to get out these pigtails. The problem is once I wipe off, I still see pigtails left over. I will admit, I'm probably not the best dual action sander. My technique is probably off because pigtails are always such a bear. So there's a couple options here. I could have gone hard with my dual action polisher and microfiber, uh, skipping the rotary altogether. Um, the Shine Mate's fantastic at this. It's got a ton of power, so check out this video. Or I invite you to go down the rabbit hole with me on my three inch flex mini rotary. Extremely small sections but extremely effective. You gotta move slow. I use their red firm pad. Their H9 compounds a diminishing abrasive so it stays wet forever. And this does help me remove pigtails, even if it feels like this is an interminable stay on just a extremely small section, but it gets results. And now I want to polish. Uh, I've got the red pad from Shinemate, uh, Speed 4, flat pad, weight of the machine. It's a very heavy machine. It's got a ton of power. I want to stay in front of the polisher, keep it flat at all times. There's a tendency for the polisher to tilt, right? The pad's going to tilt. I want hydroplaning here, 90% overlaps, about four section passes, so up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. Check out the video up here where I learned this technique from Andy B. Cool at the Koch Shimmy event in Atlanta. Okay, here you go guys, final results. I'm gonna wipe it down, wipe it down again. Oh, look at that glorious shine. I wanna do a, a quick reminder. This is how we started and we ended up with this. The customer wanted his Tundra reborn and he got what we wanted and then we ceramic coated this beast. Now if this video is a little too advanced, I want you to check this one out. It's an insane scratch removal trick with Ivan LaCroix. It's great for beginners and it actually does work for all skill levels. So that's on the upper right. And if you like this video, I've also got a playlist here. It's on the bottom right. It's just four videos that I think do the best job of explaining basic and high level polishing tricks and products. So I'll see you on that video. Thank you so much for spending your time with me.